Okay, so we're just back out here fighting with Rosie again this morning. Uh, continuing work on this track repair. Uh, yesterday I was down to Heavy Quip in Houston. Had to drop off that slack adjuster assembly because apparently no one has a assembled slack adjuster assembly, which really in today's world of aftermarket parts surprises me. Um, but I guess maybe it's because normally maybe just the either wheel brakes and not the whole dang yoke. Anyway, so they are one of a few shops, the only one that I could find in Houston that has a proper press to take that slack adjuster part to release that big spring on it. So they've got it. They'll be rebuilding that. They'll have to tear it down, obviously figure out what all parts need to replace, put it back together. Hopefully have it back in a couple days. But today I'm working on taking this um, uh, lower track roller off and replacing it. It's all burned out. I got the new one laying over there on the ground in the shadows where you probably can't see it. But I was just going to mention I had to go through and heat every nut, not a surprise, or every bolt. And I was just going to reiterate, you guys that have done this before, you know how to do it. But I'm trying to take the bolt out. You don't heat the bolt. You want to heat the metal around the bolt to make it expand. Now in this case, the bolt slides through here and then is bolted into this big one inch thick steel plate. That's where it's actually tapped and threaded. So I was putting my heat right around the base and like I said, I had to heat every one of them, but once I did, I was able to break it loose there just with a, you know, 16 or 18 inch uh, ratchet. So once I heated them up a little bit, I was able to pop them loose. I heated them and then I smacked that steel plate with a four pound hammer just to try to kind of shock it. That will help a little bit too sometimes. So anyway, I had to heat and smack all of them, but I've got them all broke loose. So now we're gonna run them out the rest of the way. And this thing weighs like 80 pounds. So it's gonna fall and try to break my toe and that's no big deal. The questionable part's gonna be how I get the, <laughs> get the new one up there. Gotta hold it up while I start the bolts. We'll figure something out. <laughs> okay so we got this part done anyway the new track roller and that was uh kind of interesting it i had like i said i had to heat every bolt and then when i backed them all out i had all four bolts out and it was just hanging there so it was kind of somewhat stuck not really rusted on i don't really know how you explain it but it was just hanging there so of course smacked it with a hammer and it dropped and fell now to finagle it up there I thought I was going to be real smart and I had it balanced on my uh, on my tool crate, milk crate there. I had it balanced on top of that and then I used this orange strap as a sling. It was ratcheting to pick it up, but that didn't work very well. Uh, I wasted a lot of time doing that and ended up falling out of the sling anyway before I could get it bolted up. What I ended up doing was just setting the roller on the track underneath and just uh, back and forth, ease, 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 bringing down the, the main beam there until I got down to where... It was all pretty well lined up and close enough that I could still move the roller to get into position but still slip the bolts through and get them started. So I was able to get all four of them just started like that um, and then picked it back up just so it was easier to work on so I had space and uh, got them tightened down. I do have to give special mention to my helper here who's out here with me because I know there's some haters out there that scream at me for having my kids around the machines but I know I've also got some loyal followers who love and support the idea. So I will tell you she has tripped over there she goes again <laughs> she, has, she has tripped over pretty much every dirt clod out here this morning which you know that's a lot uh, but what has not happened is the machine has not just you know blown into flames or catastrophically exploded and uh blown her away because she was too close to a big scary machine so uh obviously she was never anywhere in or under the beam she did play right here in the shadow of the bucket for a while i hope that's okay um bucket never moved so I hope that's okay. I hope I'm being an okay dad there. But yeah, she's a good little helper, but she's hot. She's tuckered out, so we're going to go to the house. New track roller, at least, is on. I went through and inspected all the other lowers on this side. None of them 
seem blown out like that one was, so I only replaced the one. And yeah, now we're just waiting on heavy quip. Well, okay, you'll have to excuse the water pumps running. I'm over here at Alonzo's. We're still pumping out now that the tropical storm I melted has come and gone. We, um, I just got all this put back together the day before the rain started, so it's been a week ago now. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday evening, I got it all put together, and then it rained Wednesday and Thursday and cleared off Friday, but it takes a while for 16 inches of rain to do its thing. So we had all the way, actually all of this was underwater. Um, so we just have to give it a couple days for it to drain off. Anyway, it's all put back together. We're gonna try to get Rosie fired up here and see if we can't poke it back in the machine. Well, we've got Rosie fired up again. We're gonna try to stab this uh, slack adjuster assembly back in. And I was trying to set a couple of logs under the track to keep this end up a little bit. See how this track is kind of on uneven ground and it's kind of wobbly in and out. I don't know, hopefully that won't give me any fits, but I'm afraid the wheel's gonna get into this high spot and then it's gonna bind up. I've, I've gotta get some way to get the machine up. Unfortunately, all the logs over here are very rotten. I think I'd have had better luck trying to stab a beer can under there or something because that didn't hold up for nothing. I've got a few cinder blocks over here. I really don't like using cinder blocks or something like this because they can crush. Um, but I might see if I can sit a couple under there, put them up on their edge, and maybe they'll hold long enough to get this done. Or I need to go try to find just a few more blocks of wood and just keep shoving it in there until I got enough just garbage that it at least holds it up. But um, that's not going to do me any good right now. Like I said, my only concern is just right gear. The track, you know, it, it dips down where it comes back up. I'm afraid as I go to shove it in, that either wheel's going to want to rise up on that hump. And maybe I can put the weight of the bucket on it and actually squish the whole thing down in the mud a little bit. That might work. We'll see. I'm going to try to stab it in there for right now. I've got it chained up on the machine, so let's just swing it around here and see what we can do with it.
Yes. It is in. It is in. You know what? I actually feel like doing it all with the excavator was somehow easier than when I did the other side and tried to use the tractor to assist. I guess I got it in the right side up the first time. Thankfully, luckily. So, now I gotta get the track flipped back up and over. See, we'll just take a peek in here and make sure our restart is where it needs to be. There's the back of the piston there. So we got a good bit of pumping to do, but yeah, we'll get that pumped all the way out to where it sits like it's supposed to. And uh, then we'll be able to tighten up the whole assembly. But for now, I wanted it pressed all the way in as far as it would go because that lets me um, be able to get this track flipped around like it needs to be. I want to be able to get the idler shoved as far in as it'll go, get the track together, and then we'll pump the idler back out. Okay, well, got the track flipped back on. Use the same little track that I did, or same little trick that I did. I had a video about that you guys can look up. Um, got the end of the track, leaned up against the idler, and then ran my chain from the end of the track all the way down the length of the track and pulled with the bucket out that way. Walked it right on. Now, I thought I was ready to pin it. I know I've got to do the grinding like I showed you guys on the last one too. I've got to grind in here and take this down just a little bit because the pin's not quite long enough to be an easy fit. And unfortunately, I just noticed this. My neighbor, when he cut that pin out, I'm not complaining because he's a huge help, but left a big old glob of slag. I've got to get all this cleaned out of here, out of that, so that bushing can set in there. So. I have to bring my torch over here to get all that cleaned out. Uh, the grinder and the generator to get this ground down on this side and on the other side, which I plan on doing that anyway. Uh, but yeah, I definitely have to bring the torch back over here and clean that up. It's just all slag, so hopefully I can pretty well just melt and wash it out of there without too much, uh, too much effort. So we shall see. But hey, at least the slack adjuster's back in and the track is back on. Now we just got to pin it. I tell you guys what. Being broken down off-site sucks so much more than being broken down at home. My only silver lining here is that I'm broken down right across the road. So I can run back and forth to the house all day long and get whatever I need. What a freaking pain. So this excavator track, just like the other side, I've had to grind the, the link just a little bit. The pin that they sent me, it's just a hair too short as far as the, the distance from the base of the head to the inside of the, the hole for the keeper pin. So you can't hardly get the keeper pin through. So I, I grind a little bit out of the link so that I can get the keeper pin easy in there easy. So yeah, easy enough, right? If you have power. So like a week ago, two weeks ago, whatever, when I was thinking about this, I drug my generator out of the Connex box and I started it. And much to my disbelief, it started. It hasn't been running two years. It fired up and it ran. So I added fresh gas to it and about a week later I started it again and just fine. And this morning I started it again and loaded it on a pallet, took it over here to Alonzo's, wouldn't start, will not start. I pulled and pulled and pulled and fought with that thing for several hours, got all sorts of angry. Finally, asked one of my neighbors if I could borrow his. He says, yeah, sure, go get it, no problem. I drive down there to get it, it's a big one. I can't lift that stupid thing. So I was gonna go back with the tractor to get it, and then my neighbor right next door, I heard him over there working, so I went over and got his. Now his is on this cool little trailer, it's a cool little deal. He's got it mounted on, a, it's like his own little service trailer. He's got a generator, air compressor, everything on there. You know how freaking hard it is to back a trailer up on a windy driveway in the mud with a long tractor because you got a front end loader? My goodness. It has just been not my day. Oh, and the carrier bearing went out on my truck and I was going into town to get starter fluid to try to assist my generator. <laughs> Got our grinding done. We're gonna get this track pulled back together here and get this sucker pinned and at least check one thing off the list. I want so bad, I've lost a month now, over a month to Rosie being broke down with this fool issue with the slack adjuster. So I need, I want so badly to get it fixed and these mosquitoes are hell now. All that rain we had, the mosquitoes will come back with a vengeance. So better get to work so I don't notice them. All right, a little different technique here on pinning the track this time because I was trying to use my cable come along, which is a total piece of dog crap. Um, really makes me want to go buy one like Ryan's chain hoist that I used last time, it's way better. Anyway, so that wasn't working. And so I just resorted to good old fashioned use the machine to fix itself again. Looped one chain through this shoe just to give myself a pulling eye and then hooked the chain here out to the bucket. 
and it took a little bit of finesse but I was able to actually get it pulled together and lined up and actually you didn't even have to hammer the pin through just got it lined up just right and what's funny was in my mind you know I needed to keep sucking it closer and closer and closer but you can see this thing is all sorts of chewed up we've took so much meat off that thing cutting it I hope it lasts uh, anyway these freaking bushings look they're loose those bushings didn't even want to stay in there so they kept clinking and falling out um, but I managed to finally get it finagled together to where it was all in there together and it was sitting and then you know your instinct is to want to pull straight to get it to come forward and every time I was doing that it was wanting to make the track walk off to the side and and fall down again and so finally I said well and try something different so instead of trying to extend and stretch the chain straight I rotated the body of the machine a little bit and somehow that made the that made all the vectors line up just right and it just eased right forward and held like I said I just threw the pin right through they didn't even have to hit it with a hammer it just slipped right through um, so now I just got to get this backside heated up somehow and um, bend it on the keeper pan so the keeper pan doesn't fall out get my shoes on and we're done but the hardest the hardest part is behind us now. We had to get that track pin. That, that was definitely the hardest part. Well, should be the hardest part. I think the hardest part today was finding the daggum generator, but that should be the hardest part. That part is behind us now. So we just gotta get that pin bent and we're done.